Swift has another way of building complex data types called classes. They look similar to structs, but have a number of important differences, including, first, you don't get an automatic member-wise initializer for your classes. You need to write your own. Second, you can define a class as being based off another class, adding any new things you want. And third, when you create an instance of a class, it's called an object. If you copy that object, both copies point at the same data by default. Change one, and the copy changes two. All three of those are massive differences, so I'm going to cover them in more depth before continuing. First, if we were to convert our person struct into a person class, Swift wouldn't let us write this. Class person var clothes is a string, var shoes is a string, and the class. This is because we're declaring two properties to be string, which if you remember means they absolutely must have a value at all times. This was fine in a struct because Swift automatically produces a memberwise initializer for us that forced us to provide values for the two properties. But this doesn't happen with classes so Swift can't be sure they'll be given values. There are three solutions. First, make the two values optional strings. Second, give them default values. Or third, write our own initializer. The first option is clumsy because it introduces optionals all over our code where they don't need to be. The second option works, but it's a bit wasteful unless those default values will actually be used. That leaves a third option, and really it's the right one. Write our own initializer. To do this, we'll create a method inside called init. That takes two parameters that we care about. We'll say init clothes string shoes string self.clothes equals clothes and self.shoes equals shoes. Now there are two things that might jump out at you in that code. First, you don't write func before your init method because it's special. And second, because the parameter names being passed in are the same as the names of the properties we want to assign, we use self dot to make the meaning clear. The clothes property of this object, self dot clothes, should be set to the clothes parameter that was passed in. You can give them unique names if you want to, it's down to you. Importantly though, Swift requires that all non-optional properties have a value by the end of the initializer, or by the time the initializer calls any other method, whichever comes first. The second difference between classes and structs are that classes can build on each other to produce greater things, known as class inheritance. This is a technique used extensively in Cocoa Touch, even in the most basic programs, so it's something you should get to grips with. Let's start with something simple. A singer class that has some properties, which is the name and age. As for methods, there'll be a simple initializer to handle setting the properties, plus a sing method that outputs some words. We'll say class singer, var name is a string, var age is an int, then init, name string, age int, self.name equals name, self.age, equals age, then end initializer, and func, func sing, print, la, 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 la. I'm sure that's all there is to it. Then end our class. We can now create an instance of that class by calling the initializer, then read out its properties and call its method. We'll say var Taylor equals a singer with the name Taylor and the age 25, uh, Taylor.name, Taylor.age, and Taylor.sync. That's our basic class, but we're going to build on it. I want to define a country singer class that has everything a singer class does, but when I call sing on it, I want to print trucks, guitars, and liquor instead. You could, of course, just copy and paste the original singer into a new class called country singer, but that's a lazy way to program, and it'll come back to haunt you if you later on make changes to singer and forget to copy them across. Instead, Swift has a smarter solution. We can define country singer as being based off singer, and it'll get all its properties and methods for us to build on. So up here I'll say class country singer colon singer then open and close braces. 
That colon is what does the magic. It means country singer extends singer or builds upon singer. Now that new country singer class called a subclass doesn't add anything to singer called the parent class or superclass. But we want it to have its own sing method. And in Swift, you need to learn a new keyword called override. This means I know this method was implemented by my parent class, but I want to change it for the subclass. Having the override keyword is helpful because it makes your intent clear. It also allows Swift to check your code. If you don't use override, Swift won't let you change a method you got from your superclass. Or if you use override and there wasn't anything to override, Swift will point out your error. So inside this class, I'm going to say override func sync print trucks, guitars, and liquor. Now we can modify the way the Taylor object is created. I'll say she's not a regular singer, but she is a country singer, or at least was. Now we can see different messages appearing. It's saying trucks, guitars, and liquor. Now to make things more complicated, we're going to define a new class called Heavy Metal Singer. But this time, we're going to store a new property called Noise Level, defining how loud this particular Heavy Metal Singer likes to scream down their microphone. This causes a problem, and it's one that needs to be solved in a very particular way. Swift wants all non-optional properties to have a value. Our Singer class doesn't have a Noise Level property. So, we need to create a custom initializer for Heavy Metal Singer that accepts a noise level. That new initializer also needs to know the name and age of the Heavy Metal Singer, so it can pass it on to the superclass Singer. Passing on data to the superclass is done through a method call, and you can't make method calls and initializers until you've given all your properties values. So, we need to set our own property first, which is noise level, then pass on the other parameters for the superclass to use. That might sound awfully complicated, but in code, it's straightforward. Let's write out the Heavy Metal Singer class complete with its own sing method. We'll say class Heavy Metal Singer inherits from Singer var noise level int then init with a name string and age int and a noise level int self.noise level equals noise level, set our own property first, then call up to the super class initializer by saying super.init, name is name, age is age. And now inside we have an override func sing again. We're gonna print uh, grrrrg, rrrg, rrrg. There you go, marvelous. Notice how its initializer takes three parameters, then calls super.init to pass name and age onto the singer superclass, but only after its own property has been set. You'll see super a lot when working with objects, and it just means call a method on the class I inherited from. It's usually used to mean let my parent class do everything it needs to do first, then I'll do my extra bits. Class inheritance is a big topic, so don't fret if it's not clear just yet. However, there is one more thing you need to know. Class inheritance often spans many levels. For example, A could inherit from B, and B could inherit from C, and C could inherit from D, and so on. This lets you build functionality and reuse up over a number of classes, helping to keep your code modular and easy to understand. If you want to have some part of Apple's operating system call your Swift classes method, you need to mark it with a special attribute, objc, like this, at objc. This is short for Objective-C, and the attribute effectively marks the method as being available for older Objective-C code to run, which is almost all of iOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. For example, if you ask the system to call your method after one second has passed, you need to mark it with objc. Don't worry too much about objc for now. Not only will I be explaining it later on in context, but Xcode will always tell you when it's needed. Alternatively, if you don't want to use at objc for individual methods, you can put before your whole class at objc members. Before the class. 
and will automatically make all its methods available to Objective-C.